Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. So in today's episode, we're going to learn more about uh, Laravel Blade and we are actually going to bring our HTML template for this project and create our first layout. So as I mentioned on the first episode, we do actually have an HTML template for this project and I have the code on this GitHub repo. I'll have the link in the description. You guys can go actually use it. And the main one we're going to use actually for this episode is going to be index.html. So I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to copy the HTML inside. It's relatively short. And I'm going to paste it in our dashboard.blade file that we created on the previous episode. And I have actually gone ahead and removed some of the files that we are no longer using, like the profile page for now. So this is our HTML. Uh, we are using Bootstrap 5. So I'm using something called Bootswatch. It's like a team for Bootstrap to give us that kind of a drawing look. I'll show you guys in a second. And yeah, so we have one HTML here. We're using the CDN and we have one JavaScript at the end. So that's it. Very simple template. So let's go see how it looks. And yeah, this is how it looks right now. Uh, we have a section for sharing our ideas. We have a search bar. We can follow people here. We have a comments box here, which I think later on I will change a little bit. I don't know if it's good to have the comments here. We might have a separate page for that. And we have a login and register page, which we will implement later on once we get into authentication. For now, we won't be covering that. So now that we have this, I want to actually show you guys how you can clean this out. So what if you had a second page? For example, uh, we had a terms and conditions page. As, as a matter of fact, let's go and create our terms page right now. So I'll go to our web.route and I create a terms page and I'll do it the old school way. I'm not going to create a controller for it. I'm just going to create a closure and I'm going to return a view with the name of terms. So I'll do that right now. And I'll use the exact same template. So I'll close this so you guys can see. This is our navigation. So this container is basically where the main content of a website is. And here I'm going to add a div, I suppose. Did I add two divs? I did. Okay. I'll add a div and inside it, I'll put some lorem ipsum. So some dummy text. And if you guys are not familiar with lorem ipsum, it's just some basically nonsense data people use as placeholder text, or maybe it does have meaning. I'm not sure. Actually, I don't want to say it's nonsense, but that's what's commonly used. So I'll put it here. So we pretend that this is our terms and conditions. So I'll go to the terms page and you can see it is working, right? We have a very simplified terms and conditions page and I'll even add an H1 tag. So it is working, but one issue you might have guessed, and this is a common issue when you're also writing with PHP, right? Vanilla PHP is our header and our footer is duplicated on each of the pages we make, right? So throughout this application, you might have like 10 pages and we don't want to actually have to copy and paste this header. What if you want to change this title, right? Do we have to do it like 10 times? What if you want to change our, you know, template, whatever, things like that. So what we need to do is actually create a reusable layout for all our pages. So let's go about, let's go and do that. We're going to go ahead and actually inside our views folder, create a new an extra folder. I'm going to call it uh, layout. Yeah. And inside here, I'll name another file also named layout. You could also name your folder shared if you like, but I call it layout.blade.php. So inside here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually paste in our header and footer, except for this section, which is uh, for a specific page, right? So that one is going to be unique to each page and it's not going to be duplicated. And I'll do the same for the footer. So I'm going to move it here and I'll format it so it looks nice. And I'm going to add some comments. And with Laravel Blade, you can actually add comments kind of similar with PHP. So this is how comments look. You have two open and curl braces, dash, dash, then again, dash, dash. 
two closing curl braces. This is going to be comments in blade. And I'm going to say uh, page content goes here, right? Just so we have some indicator here. So if we go save this, go back to our terms page, obviously it's going to look awful to be expected. So what I want to do is instead of having to write this header and footer HTML all the time, I want to tell Laravel Blade, hey, go and fetch it from this layout file, right? And put our terms data, this HTML, inside this container. How do we go about doing that? So Laravel Blade actually has a directive for this. It's called yield. And basically you create a section and I'll name it content. And then you're able to actually go to another blade file, such as our terms page and tell it to extend, extends layout. So now it's going to go ahead and actually copy all the code from our layout.php and put it inside this terms.php. So I'm just going to go ahead and refresh the page. We do get an error here because I made a mistake with the name. So we, are, we need to go layout.layout, .layout, right? It's a layout.blade inside a layout folder. So, and the convention here, we could also use this, but I like to use dot. That's the convention in the PHP community. So if you refresh and you can see, this is actually kind of working. Now it does look out of back and I'll tell you guys why. Right now, now that we have extended it, Laravel Blade doesn't know where to put this HTML, right? For us, we want to put it inside this div, right? That's why we put the yield, ta yield tag here or the yield directive. So in order to actually move this HTML inside this container, what we can do is we can wrap it around a directive called section. And we need to name it same as our yield. So here I named it content. I'm going to do the same here. And by doing so, we are telling Laravel Blade, hey, go ahead, copy this HTML and move it inside here or replace it with this yield. That's what we are basically telling Laravel Blade to do. So if we refresh our page, we can see now it looks very nice. It looks exactly like it did previously, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing on our dashboard page. I'll get rid of all the duplicated HTML. So the footer, I'll remove it. I remove this. I'll remove all of that. And I'm going to say extends layout dot layout. And here I'm going to say section content. Again, don't forget about the section. Otherwise, your page is going to look weird. I'm going to save it go back and if you go to our root page you can see it also looks like it did before so we have basically created our first reusable layout in our Laravel application now one more thing i would like to do is actually i want to simplify this a little bit more i actually like to separate my navigation this navigation bar from this layout file and the reason i like to do that is later on we're going to have a lot of blade code inside here we're going to have our you know different navigation pages i like this to be a bit more clean so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new file i'm going to call it nav.blade.php for now and i'm going to move our navigation inside that file so i'll cut this i'll go inside nav and in order to actually use our navigation file here we can use something called include the include directive and I'm going to say layout.nav and the include directive is same as copying we're basically or similar to include uh, inside PHP right when you include another PHP file we're basically telling Laravel Blade hey go ahead find this nav file which is here copy all of its content and paste it here it's same as that and so this makes our code a bit more reusable later on if you want to maybe use this navigation in a different layout if you want, or if this nav file gets very long, it still keeps our layout file clean and small. So I'll go save it and it looks like it did before, no issues. Now, I also want to teach you guys one more thing, and that is about how to actually use our configuration files.
So here we have Twitter clone bootstrap five template. I actually want to change this with the name of our application. Now you can technically just type in ideas, but Laravel comes in with a way to store your configuration. So, and your configuration are actually stored, environment variables are stored inside .env file. If you go here, find the .env file, you see a bunch of configurations here and we'll learn about them as we go along. But for now, at the top, you have something called app name. So that actually is the app name of your application. I'm going to actually change that to ideas. So that's going to be our app name from now on. And the, where this app name is actually defined inside this config folder where I mentioned in the episode three. So if you go inside config, click on the first one app. So these are going to be application related configuration you will see that it's actually defined here, right? So this env uh, function, uh, if you haven't used it, it's I believe a public library. You can also use it in PHP. All it does is read this app name from our env file. So from this env file, which stands for environment variables, is reading it from this env file. So that's why it's called env. Let's read it from env. If it's not available, use Laravel as default. So I'll show you guys the definition. It tries to find a key inside our in file, environment variable file. If it can't find it, it'll use the default. And so that's why the default app name is Laravel if you don't have this env file, but we do. And for us, it's called ideas. Now, how can we actually access this configuration inside our blade file? Well, luckily for us, it's actually very easy. I'll open the kind of blade display tag or directive, right? Which is the opening curl braces. And I'm going to type in config. Yeah, it's that simple. The config function. And then you need to name, give the name of the config. So as you can see inside this config folder, we have a bunch of them, right? We have, I don't know, maybe it's 12 or something. You first type in the name of your config, which is app. You put dot and then the specific config that you want. So inside our app.php config, we have the name configuration, we have the env configuration, we have debug, right? We have the time zone configuration, we have a bunch of them. For now, I want the name configuration. So I'm just going to type in name, right? So Laravel will go ahead inside the app and take this name and return it to us here. So I'm going to save this, go back. And I'm not sure if it's visible, but at the top left, we have ideas over here. We also want to change this with the name in our environment variable or our configuration. So I'll copy this and find it inside our navigation layout.nav. Where is the ideas? Oh, it's here. So it's hard coded here. I'll replace it here as well. And if you refresh, I get ideas. That's it. I think I left the extra space. So I'll get rid of that. And as you can see, we get ideas. And just to show you it does work, I'll change it from ideas to maybe something else. Hello. And you can see it is actually working. So we are loading this from our environment variable. And that's the very basics of configurations. We will learn more about configurations in later episodes. But I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of it, a small snippet. So you guys can actually play around with this if you like. And you can also maybe go through this .env file on your own time and see what's available. We can see we have our database connection information, our log information, and some additional stuff here. We will work with them later on once we are, we are going to use our database. But for now, this is all we need. And yeah, that's it, guys. So we have created our first layout. I may rename these two later on, but for now, this is good and our page is working. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, we can leave them in the comment sections below. And I try to answer all of your guys' questions. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. See you guys on the next episode. Have a great day.